Welcome back to my series of tutorials on how to create mods for the Bounty of Isaac. If you haven't seen a previous episode where we learned about the Isaac animation editor and what .anim2 files are, you can view it by clicking the button in the top right corner. This tutorial will be using a fresh mod folder, so you won't be seeing the other items we created in previous videos. We're going to create a passive item that poisons enemies upon entering a room. The length of the poison depends on how many copies of the item the player has. This item will also have a death portrait. It will not give Isaac a costume or a special appearance. We'll learn how to do costumes in a later tutorial. The death portrait of an item is the icon it'll be represented with on the pause menu, death menu, or bestiary. The item we're making in this video is similar to the item Green Candle from the Afterbirth modding tutorial series by Lightbringer. So thank you Lightbringer for the excellent concept. The item will be named Pollen, and the length of the poison effect will increase depending on how many copies of the item the player has. I have a fresh mod here. As always, first we need to go into our items.xml and define our item. Content, create an items.xml. Since we've done this twice already, I'm not going to explain what each attribute means. If you're confused, check out the community documentation link in the description and navigate to the documentation on the items.xml file. This here adds the item in the game correctly, but we're not done. Something I want to point out is that each item we've added so far in the series hasn't had an item portrait. Item portraits being the death portraits that I mentioned earlier. I'll be making another video going over how these work in the future, but for now we'll be using a template for the death portraits. Basically, every item's death portrait is all in one big sprite sheet. Each sprite in the sheet is 16 by 16 pixels. Each sprite will have its own frame in a .anm2 file. The ID of the item, as defined in the items.xml, directly correlates to the frame the item's portrait should be on. So for example, if your item's ID is zero, that item's portrait should be on frame zero. Remember that frames count up from zero instead of one. That's a lot to remember. The website linked on screen and in the description lets you generate the sprite sheet and the .anm2 file with enough space for the specified amount of items. I recommend generating one with enough space for a lot more items than you think you'll need so that it'll be easier to add more items in the future. All right, here's the website. I'll input the number of items I want to have space for here. These two fields you don't really need to worry about. You can leave them as default. Firstly, we should save the sprite sheet by right-clicking this white box here and clicking Save Image As. This part is important, so listen closely. The sprite sheet does not go into the GFX folder in your Resources folder. Instead, it'll go into a GFX folder in your Contents folder, as that's where the game will look for this file. I'm going to create that folder now, so watch if you're confused. Content, new folder, GFX. Make sure you save the file with the same name that is in this box here. Custom underscore death underscore items dot png. Open the image up in your favorite pixel art program that can save images with a 32-bit depth and replace the squares with your sprite. Okay, while this box is selected, press Control A, then Control C to copy. We're gonna copy this text into a new ANM2 file. Make sure to make this ANM2 file where you saved your sprite sheet. We're gonna call this ANM2 file death underscore items dot ANM2. I have it opened up, control V, here it all is. Now let's actually connect our death portraits to our items. Go back into your items.xml file and create a new attribute right here titled death anim2. The value will be gfx slash death underscore items dot anim2, because that's what we named our anim2 file from earlier. All right, here I am in game. When I collect this item and open the pause menu, 
the item's portrait is shown instead of a question mark. All right, now that we've set up our item, let's get to coding it. I've opened up our main.lua file. I've already registered our mod top. First, let's get our item's ID and store it in a variable. Remember, since Isaac is a class and not an object, you call this function with a dot and not a colon. Also, notice how I named this variable in all caps with underscores between each letter. This is because this variable is a constant. A constant is a variable that is immutable, meaning it never changes and never will be changed. I named the variable in this fashion so that it's immediately obvious what this variable is designed to do. It's not required, but I find it really handy to find variables like this, and I think it makes things a lot more readable. This is a common practice in some other coding languages, so you might recognize it from that. I didn't do this in previous videos because I didn't want to overwhelm the viewer with lots of specific information that isn't completely necessary. I figure that it's okay to share now since you have at least a basic understanding of Isaac modding. Moving on, let's define another variable with a decimal representing the percentage chance of the poison activating. If I put 0.4 here, there will be a 40% chance for the enemy to be poisoned. Our next variable will define how long the poison lasts in ticks. Almost all gameplay related logic is updated 30 times a second, with each individual update being called a tick. Meanwhile, rendering related logic is updated 60 times a second. If the player's PC is very laggy, then there will be less ticks per second, though this is a rare occurrence and is inconsequential when it happens. Moving on, the way poison damage is dealt is a little weird. The first instance of damage happens after 3 gameplay ticks, and then 20 ticks henceforth. So one instance of damage happens 3 ticks after the poison was applied, then another instance of damage 23 ticks after, then another at 43, and so on. After six instances of damage, the poison effect will wear off. I'm gonna set the base length to three, which is how many ticks it takes for poison to do its first instance of damage. Then I'll add 20 for each copy of the item. This means that having only one copy of the item will deal two instances of poison damage because it's three plus 20 times one. To find another variable named one underscore interval, underscore of underscore poison with the value set to 20. We'll multiply using this variable instead of the number 20. We do this because we want to avoid magic numbers, which is a programming term for numbers in code that have no obvious meaning. It's very important to avoid these if you want to maintain your codes of readability, especially when doing math operations. Lastly, we're going to store the game object. This object houses a lot of methods that allow us to interact with the game. Remember, a method is just a function that's a part of an object. You can call these with a colon and not a dot. Instantiate or create the object by calling this constructor. All right, let's create a callback. We're going to hook into the MC post new room event. Our callback will be called upon entering a new room after all enemies have been spawned. I've named this callback pollen new room. Make sure you name your callback something short yet descriptive. In this callback, we're going to first check every player to see if they have the item. If they do, we're going to go over every vulnerable enemy and roll a random number generator, also known as RNG. We're going to roll for a decimal between zero and one. If that decimal is below this amount defined up here, the enemy will become poisoned. The poison will last longer if the player has multiple copies of the item. That's a lot of information to take in at once, but as we go on, it'll become easier to understand. First, we're going to iterate or go over every player. We're going to check how many copies the item the player has and start going over every enemy if they have more than zero. To get the player count, call the getNumPlayers method of game. 
we'll store this number in a variable named player count. Now we're going to use a for loop to iterate over every player. The loop will count up by one until it reaches the number of players in the game. We will then retrieve the player with that index using Isaac.getPlayer. Something to note is that Isaac.getPlayer counts from zero. This means that player one has an index of zero, player two has an index of one, and so on. So our loop should start counting from zero, and our goal number should be the player count minus one. This way, each number the loop provides is a valid player index. So for player index equals zero, player count minus one do, this right here will count up from zero until it reaches player count minus one. If there's only one player, then the code inside this loop will only run once. Now let's actually get the player object by using Isaac.getPlayer with the current number the loop is on. As you can see here, I am using the player index and feeding it into the get player function of the Isaac class, which will return a valid player object. Next, check how many copies of the item the player has with player get collectible num. Put the item's ID as the argument. Remember, we only want to poison enemies if they have at least one copy of the item. So make an if statement here that checks if they have more than zero copies of the item. If copy count is greater than zero, then... To recap, we are currently iterating over every player index, getting the player of that index, checking how many of the item they have, then if they have at least one copy of the item, proceed to the next bit of code. Okay, now we can iterate over every enemy. Since this involves chance, we will use a random number generator, or RNG, to see if the enemy should be poisoned. We're going to generate a random float. A float is a name for a number that is a decimal between 0 and 1. If that float is below this variable, then it will poison the enemy. RNG is an object, and each player has a unique RNG object for each item in the game. You can obtain it by calling player get collectible RNG with our item's ID as the argument. Okay. Now that the pieces are set in place, let's make it work. We're going to use another for loop to iterate over every entity in the room. We'll check if that entity is an enemy that can be damaged, and if they are, we will roll the RNG and poison the enemy if the check passes. We can get an array or an ordered table that contains every room entity by calling Isaac get room entities. just like this. Then, in a for loop, use the iPairs iterator to go over every entry in that array. We've done this before in the active item tutorial, so check that out if you're confused as I explain what iPairs means in greater detail. Before we can do the RNG check, we should make sure they're actually an enemy. We don't want to poison particle effects, and we don't want to poison things that aren't meant to be hurt such as fireplaces, shopkeepers, and stonies. We can check if the entity is an enemy, and if it isn't a shopkeeper or fireplace, by calling the isActiveEnemy method of the enemy's object, which returns a boolean. So in an if statement, entity is active enemy. After that, we can add an and here. Then check if the enemy is vulnerable, by calling entity is vulnerable enemy. This and here tells the if statement that it 
should not proceed unless both of these conditions are true. They both return booleans. So if those booleans are both true, we can proceed. Now onto the RNG check. We will call the random float method of the RNG object we got earlier. This will give us a randomly generated float, also known as a number between 0 and 1, as I stated earlier. We will check if that is less than the percentage chance that we defined up here. And if it is, we can poison the enemy. If RNG random float is less than pollen poison chance, then. All right, now we can finally poison the enemy. Call the add poison method of the entity. Pay close attention to the arguments that we're about to provide. I'm going to provide them on different lines so that it's easier to read. The first argument is the source of damage. This will be the player, but I can't directly provide the player object I have in a variable up here. We have to provide it in an entity ref, which is an object that provides a reference to an entity. The reason we have to do this is pretty complicated and it's outside the scope of the tutorial. So just know that you can construct an entity ref for any entity like this. With the entity within the parentheses. The next argument is the duration. Add the pollen poison length to one interval of poison times copy count. Lastly is the amount of damage the poison will do. I want to keep it consistent with the game, so I'll just use the players as damage. All right, the last thing to do is to actually hook the callback. So mod colon add callback, then the callback ID, so mod callbacks dot post new room, then the actual callback itself. Remember, we are not calling the callback, we are just providing a reference to it. So we do mod dot polon new room. Okay, everything is ready. Let's go in game, give ourselves the item, and test it. So I'm going to run lua mod, and then the name of the mods directory, my mod. This will reload all of the code in the mod. All right, I've turned on damage values and I'm going to go into a room. As you can see, it poisoned them twice with my damage. Now, if we give ourselves five more copies of the item and then go to the boss, One, two, three, four, five, six. That was six instances of damage because we had six copies of the item. All right, it all works perfectly. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any coding questions, please join my Discord server or ask in the coding channel on the Modding of Isaac Discord server. Both servers are linked in the description. You can see every video in the series by clicking the playlist on the screen. Thank you for watching. See ya.